Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. This is the third annual Nose to Nose Pet Blogging and Social Media Awards. Pet360 is presenting the Blog Pause Annual Awards to all of you, and we have a wonderful MC that will be coming up. I want to just thank everybody for being here. This is going to be a wonderful evening. Um, in just a moment, the service staff is kind of working their way out. You're still welcome to kind of finish. Yes, thank them. They did a wonderful job bringing all our food. As they move out, you're welcome to, you know, still eat, but... We will have dessert after this, so once everything is over, you can have a scrumptious dessert. This is sort of like nap time for your belly. In the meantime, I would like to introduce Pet360's EVP and CMO, our beautiful and wonderful, wonderfully talented, Rose Hamilton. Given that I'm short, this needs to come down just a tish bit. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to see all these fabulous people in here and all these fabulous costumes and dresses. It's incredible, just incredible. Good evening, and thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this amazing community. I, for one, I don't know if you all agree, think that this is the most spectacular conference so far in the history of Blog Pause. Who agrees with me? That's right. Without a doubt, the very best conference to date. So I think it just might be time to give a tremendous round of applause for Yvonne, Tom, Chloe, Carol, Felissa, Robbie, and the entire event team that pulled this together. Without you, we wouldn't be here. You all are truly spectacular. And I'm the newbie to all this, so I'm, I'm just learning as we go here. Seriously, really great job, guys. And it's, it's tremendous and amazing to be here. I'm here tonight to introduce our very special Master of Ceremonies, Dr. Michael Cavanaugh, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the American Animal Hospital Association. But before I do that, before I invite Mike to the stage, I think I'd like to take a little bit of time to share with you some exciting developments going on with Pet360 and how you all fit in and how our future relationship works together and the things that we want to do together in partnership with you. When I think about Blog Pause and I think about Pet360, there's a very special element that unifies us all. We're all about empowering pet parents to be the very best that they can be. Can everybody see me okay? I need to be a little louder, gotcha. Can you hear me? Am I okay? Okay, good, yeah, okay, okay. So when I think about what we get the opportunity to do together, it's all about influencing pet parents. It's about making that difference in a pet parent's life. And at Pet360, our core is really being the most reliable network of resources for pet parents, and you're all a really big part of that. Our network includes over 30 of the top pet websites and reaches over 12 million pet parents a month. 12 million, guys. It's a huge amount. And the family of our brands now, as it's grown and as we are continuing to mushroom, includes Pet360.com, for anybody who doesn't know, PetMD.com, PetFoodDirect.com, Blog Pause, and now our most recent edition, Only Natural Pet. Thank you, whoever barked. I love that. And why do we exist? Well, at the bottom line is we exist because we believe pet parents deserve lives enriched by great pet parents. I said that backwards. Pets deserve lives enriched by great pet parents. How about that? How's that sound? A little bit better? There we go. We empower pet parents to make the very best decisions every day. You're all a part of that. We also facilitate conversations between brands and you. All of your favorite brands, 
How do we engage and help you get connected? That's what we're here to do. From expert tips and advice to product recommendations, our goal is to offer pet parents the full 360 solution. Again, you're all a part of that. Our commitment to you is that we really want to have a good look at how we can help you with the things that you're doing every day. We want to educate and influence pet parents by bringing trusted information, quality information, and together we'll have an even greater impact. We also believe that pet parents and the pet industry as a whole allow you an opportunity to be a leader, a thought leader. Your unique voice, if you have five followers or five million, really doesn't matter. Every single one of you counts. You're each a thought leader. That's why sponsoring this very special Nose to Nose Award program here tonight is so important to us this year. We believe you all deserve to be recognized for the tremendous, tremendous contributions each of you make every single day of the year as you look at your blogs and look at your influence and look at your voice. You're making significant contributions to the pet industry every single day. And tonight is just one more way Blog Paws and Pet360 are able to really recognize you for doing exactly that. As bloggers, your readers turn to you for journalistic integrity. Your candor, your authenticity, your uniqueness, your knowledge, whatever your background may be, you're unique and you're special. It might even be your sense of humor. That might be why people come back to see you and your personality and to hang out and spend time with you. Whatever it is, you have a voice. Don't ever forget that. And Pet360 wants to help you harness that voice to do even greater things for pets and pet parents. We want to help support you in your endeavors as you educate, advise, become an authority, and provide entertainment, because that's important too for pet parents around the world. So for us, what does that mean? How are we helping you? What are we doing for you these days? Providing you trusted and reliable content, really important. We encourage you to check out and leverage PetMD and Pet360 as authoritative resources when you're looking for story ideas. And even if you're looking to just research certain topics, we're there for you. We have a great team giving you access to pet parenting tools that can be easily shared. So if you think about it, we have the chocolate toxicity meter as an example. We have all kinds of tools like the symptom checker, all kinds of things you can find on Pet360 and PetMD. Check them out. If you haven't gone out to take a look, you really should. We have a lot to offer you. In addition, we're building a very active online community. Again, if you haven't been out there to Pet360.com, come find us, come check us out. We've got lots of fun engagement happening there. And if you really haven't even filled out your profile there, that's even more important. Why? Because it's another platform for you as a blogger to be known, to grow your following, to have people watch you and listen to what you're saying. We're building an engagement platform, and you're a big part of that, and we're doing a lot of it for you. So enjoy it. Go out there, check it out. We're also providing you with access to expert contributors for stories you're developing. You can come, you can contact us anytime. There's lots of Pet360 people floating around, and we'd love to get to know you, and we'd love to help you on any stories or anything you're creating. We're building education for you to have a 365 days a year program, and we're facilitating those connections between you and the brands you love. Very important, because we know that's important to you, especially as we think about the blogger programs. And we all know how they're growing and how your voices and your influence is growing. And those programs, incredibly important. I'm hoping that you've all had a chance to meet the pack here. And if you haven't, we're sponsoring a little happy hour afterwards. And so make sure you take time to kind of come and meet us and see what we can do to help you. We're all anxious to meet every single one of you and explore the opportunities. And Larry, Larry Kay, I know I haven't seen you yet. Happy hour. We will connect, I promise. And now to kick off the third annual Nose to Nose Pet Blogger and Social Media Awards. I'd like to introduce your Master of Ceremonies. Dr. Michael Cavanaugh is Chief Ex Executive Officer of the American Animal Hospital Association, AHA. Based in Colorado, AHA accredits veterinarian hospitals across the U.S. and Canada, helping them to meet high standards of veterinarian excellence in order to provide quality care for pets. Something kind of interesting, as I was talking with him tonight over dinner, is that, I don't know if everybody knows, not all animal hospitals are accredited. It's not required by law to be accredited. 
And actually, only to 12 to 15 percent of animal hospitals have gone through that program to be accredited and through the evaluation process by AHA. Dr. Kavanaugh practiced veterinary medicine at AHA accredited hospitals, including West Ridge Animal Hospital in Topeka, Kansas, which he opened in 1988. Dr. Kavanaugh is the proud owner of a 13-year-old Border Collie named Zoe, who moonlights as AHA's dog rector, like director. Get it? Kind of cool, huh? Even though you may mistake him for your grandpa, Dr. Kavanaugh is an avid outdoorsman and enjoys skiing, kayaking, hiking, mountain biking, and other death-defying feats. Thank goodness AHA has great insurance. I don't know. I think it's a pretty good thing. Among the veterinarian professional, he is also known as Crocodile Mikey, Fuzzy Bottoms, and Dr. Cav, Vet Detective. Ooh, I like that. And although karaoke is very near and dear to his heart, his staff said his alter ego, get this, Dr. Boom Boom, had to stay home on this trip. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Kavanaugh to the stage. Good evening. How do I look? <laughs> you know, Ah has been involved with Blog Pause for several years. This is the first time I've ever gotten to attend myself. But I heard a few things, and I was bound and determined I would not be upstaged and outdressed by a well-dressed cat. So I got out the tuxedo, the red cummerbund, <laughs> red socks, <clears throat> and you have to make an entrance, right? You got to make an entrance, and I'm going to tell you, you guys have a little more energy than the average veterinary group that I'm typically in front of. <laughs> it usually takes an entrance like that to make them realize that the award show started. Okay, you guys realize the award show started, right? We had a red carpet out here. I'm here. Okay, well, it's really great to be here. I appreciate the invitation. I think we're gonna have a great deal of fun tonight, like it or not. And. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, this is a pet-loving crowd here. I'm wondering if anybody heard about the insomniac, dyslexic, agnostic. Anyone heard of this person? He lies awake at night wondering if there really is a dog. <laughs> I'll say that again. <laughs> wondering if there really is a dog. Insomniac, can't sleep, dyslexic, you know, gets letters mixed up, and agnostic, you know, might question whether there's a higher power. Do you get it? Okay. All right, very good. Well, speaking of dogs, um, Rose, thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm sure my mother would have really liked to hear that. Um, the, uh, the fact of the matter is that I do have a dog named Zoe. Can we show her, please? There she is. So uh, I apologize, I didn't have a better photo, but this was when she was making her New Year's resolution at the beginning of 2013. So I don't know if you can read it. I, Zoe, am going to get over my phobia of walking on wood floors, and I'm going to stop chewing all the fuzz off of tennis balls in an obsessive compulsive manner, because um, she does those things. We have wood floors in our house, and, and if you came to my home, you would wonder, why do you have these little road maps of rug runners? going all over the house. It's so Zoe can get from point A to point B. And mo more importantly, um, if you look uh, to the bottom left of the photo there, you can see where her little dog bowl is. This is in my office at AHA in Denver. 
And you probably can't read her nameplate either, but it does indeed say Zoe Kavanaugh, Executive Director. <laughs> I typically don't bring her to public appearances like this with me. Um, not that she, you know, she's a lovely dog and everything like that, but it really bothers me that it doesn't take people long to figure out that she's much smarter than I am. <laughs> and uh, definitely the brains of the operation, that's why I bring her to work. So, all that said, I've got to open a bottle of water here already. You guys make me so nervous. <laughs> Thank you. So they've given me the opportunity to tell you just a little bit about AHA for just a minute, and then we'll jump into the awards. So we've been around since 1933. And the crazy thing is that even though we've just celebrated our 80th anniversary a year ago, a lot of people still don't know who the heck we are and what the heck we do. And uh, accreditation was mentioned earlier in, in the introduction, and that is and always will be at our core, uh, no doubt about that. You know, we recently did some market research with pet owners trying to get to the bottom of this. You know, what is it we need to do to help them understand who we are? And 60% of the people who responded uh, to this survey, uh, these are our uh, pet parents, they think they're going to an accredited hospital when in fact they're not. That group wasn't. 80% of them said that once they kind of understand accreditation and what it's all about and that not every hospital is accredited, 80% of them said they would seek out an accredited uh, practice. So um, they're confused, and I know I heard someone mention earlier that the idea that on the human side, there we go, hello. On the human side, all, animal ho or all human hospitals have to be accredited or they can't participate in the Medicare program and things like that. And clearly they need to do that in order to make a living. So all human hospitals are accredited. So about 14% of veterinary hospitals make the commitment to go through the AHA accreditation process. It's voluntary. Um, there are some states that do inspections and some states will go in and investigate a complaint or whatever, but we're the only game in town when it comes to accrediting uh, animal hospitals. So we, uh, our tagline is the standard of veterinary excellence. We have right now about 3,500 accredited hospitals in the U.S. and Canada. Roughly 10% of our membership is in Canada at this point in time. Uh, it's a very rigorous process. Nine, over 900 standards in 18 different categories covering everything from soup to nuts in an interview one time and then you're accredited for life or something like that. Um, it's rigorous, it's time consuming and not everyone chooses to do it. So how do you know if your hospital's accredited or not? Um, look for our logo. Um, you see the, you can look at an accredited hospital locator on aha.org. Just put in the zip code and all of the accredited practices in that area will pop up and, and populate. So uh, why choose an AHA practice? Uh, we have this new uh, uh, kind of blurb that we're trying to get our practices to, to kind of bite on here. AHA accredited hospitals hold themselves to a higher standard. Accredited hospitals are passionate about pets. Keeping them healthy is their number one priority. They strive to deliver excellent care for pets because your pets deserve nothing else, nothing less, excuse me. Thank you. Um, so I need your help anyway. You guys are really good at what you do, and I've already explained that we're not very good at what we do, or people would know who we are after 80 years, right? So we can use your help. Um, we'd like you to join us as we work to try to educate pet owners about AHA accreditation and, and uh, importance of preventive care and things. We need you to help us spread the word about accreditation, and I'm going to challenge you, if you don't know, uh, check and find out if your hospital is accredited or not. If they're not, ask them why not, because it would be good for them. Um, I'm going to ask that you tell five of your friends or followers uh, about accreditation, and they're going to be surprised to learn that only about 14% of hospitals are accredited. And I think together we can raise the awareness and, and really work together to improve the health of our pets. AHA does other things. Uh, we're a professional association. We're, we're a 501c6. That makes us a trade association as opposed to a charity. So we have continuing education programs we do for veterinarians and their practice teams. We produce a couple of magazines, Trends Magazine for the practice teams. The Journal of the American Animal Hospital Association is our scientific journal. 
Uh, we have book publishing. We put out guidelines for the profession. Um, we look for leadership opportunities. Um, one that we've been particularly involved in here lately for the last four years is called Partners for Healthy Pets. Um, just uh, by applause, how, how many of you have heard of Partners for Healthy Pets before? Okay, good. Very good. Actually, more than I expected, so that's a good thing. So we've been at this for four years. 116 different organizations from all parts of the veterinary profession and industry are working together on this. And these are like, you know, drug companies and pet food companies and people that are competitors in the marketplace, but they've taken the gloves off and worked together to try to promote the importance of preventive care. And our goal is to try to improve the health of our nation's pets. We want to get them into the veterinarian for a checkup at least once a year. Um, together, those organizations have contributed about $11 million over the last four years. And we um, recently started, I think in December is when our uh, consumer campaign started. We've got this awesome public service announcement I'm going to ask them to play here in a second. It's had over a thousand airings uh, worth about one and a half million dollars here since December. So we're really, really tickled that it's gotten picked up so much. So can we roll that uh, PSA real quick, please? You see your snuggle bunny, your playmate, your alarm clock, your best friend. But when it comes to keeping your loved one healthy, your vet is trained to see more. That's why a yearly checkup with your family vet is as essential as food and love. So make an appointment today. A reminder from Partners for Healthy Pets. You like that? Good. Has anyone actually seen it play on TV? I heard a yes. Sweet. All right, good. Well, you know, it's probably playing at odd times. You know, it's free, all that. But we're, we're happy that it's getting as much airtime as it is. So um, I would encourage you to uh, look at the website, partnersforhealthypets.org, or the pet owner site is called healthypetcheckup.org. And if you haven't checked those out, please do so. So enough about AHA. Holy cow. I can see some of you getting angry at me. We're going to move forward. Who's ready to have some fun? Yeah. Welcome to the Blog Pause 2014 Nose to Nose Pet Blogging and Social Media Awards. My assistant, Chloe, is here looking rather stunning this evening, don't you think? Come on over. Welcome. Thanks for helping me. Thank you, look, you. you look very stunning this evening. I know. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> oh. The real question that I know everyone here is wondering. What? Boxers or briefs? Depends. It depends. Depends on who's asking. How about that? Okay. All right. I awesome. That. All right. Well, let's get on with it then, shall we? Are you all set there, Chloe? Yep. All right. We're going to get started with the Best Cat Blog Award. Energy, folks. Come on. Yeah, there's... A... Okay. And just for the flow of things, we're going to ask the winners when you get announced to come up over here. We'll allow you to say a few words here and then go off here. Okay. So best cat blog. Woo! We've got the nominees include Cat in the Fridge, Catty Wumpus, Glow Girly, The Creative Cat. The winner is Glow Girly, Debbie Glavatsky. Come on up, Debbie. You're looking, you're looking stunning in those fuzzy ears. Adore seeing the world through my cat's eyes and laughing at the world through my cat's eyes. And the only thing better than that is, is knowing that I'm making you laugh with me too. 
and thank you so much for your support. Thank you to Blog Pause. Thank you to the judges, and especially thank you to my friends, fans, readers that that take the time to come see me just about every day and and giggle along with me. Um, you really you you make it all worthwhile. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. All right. We are going to move right along here because I know you guys are all big partiers and you want to get to the next big party. Next, we're going to do the best cause blog. Say that fast three times. Cat in the fridge. Fire safety rocks. Riverfront cats. And the lazy pit bull are our nominees. Our winner is... Fire safety rocks. And my understanding is that Dana Hilton is in New York City for a fundraiser. So it looks like we have a stand-in acceptance. Congratulations. I know. <laughs> um, so Dana couldn't be here, and she's devastated that she couldn't attend Blog Pause again this year. But she's doing what Dana does best. She's t teaching fire safety in New York City. So she thanks you, and mm -hmm. I told her I would accept this on her behalf. Awesome. Thank you, Dana. Very good. Next, best blog design. And our nominees include Alfie's blog. There's Glow Girly again. The Intrepid Pup. And To Dog With Love. All right, this may be a little boring, but it's Glow Girly again. Come on back up, Debbie. Congratulations again. We may just want to get her a chair up here. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my. <laughs> I really didn't ex see this one coming. Um, thank you so much. Uh, many of you who know me know that I just, I'm a, I'm a design geek. I, I love this stuff. and. And pet blogging has been such a, a wonderful way of, of being able to express creativity, have fun, make people laugh. And I feel so honored and privileged to have helped a few people in this room do the very same thing. Thank you so much. All right. Congratulations. Okay. Now I'm going to guess... For this one, the cat people will probably take their newspapers out and hold it up like they don't care because this is the best dog blog, okay? The best dog blog, our nominees are The Intrepid Pup, Romping and Rolling in the Rockies, The Dog in the Clouds, and The Lazy Pit Bull. The judges tell me The Intrepid Pup is the winner. Tracy Bates, come on up, Tracy. Congratulations. Not me, but thank you. Oh, okay. Accepting on, what, accepting on behalf. So this will probably be the only time I get to get up here and accept a Best Dog Blog Award because I'm not eligible for stuff like this. Um, I'm really grateful that you picked the Intrepid Pup. She couldn't be here, but she texted me a message should she win. So thank you so much for what is incredibly humbling amidst so much talent. The Intrepid Pup, her dog Tavish, both wish you all a great journey similar to the one she's been on. And Blog Paws, she says you all have been with her every single step of the way. She says thank you, and her tagline is come, adventures await. So with Blog Paws, she can't wait to see what's next for all of us. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Do you guys, do you ever stop and think about what we can do, like, like just then? You know, think of... Uh, when, when, you know, somebody like me was a kid before the internet, before video games, all that stuff. I can remember being at my, my girlfriend, who today is my wife. I can remember being at her house, and her dad had bought Pong. 
And we sat there and we were mesmerized by these two white lines that would go back and bloop, 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 would hit the little ball back and forth. And so now we have somebody who can't be here to accept their award. They already know they won and they already they gave an acceptance speech remotely. Was it just in case. That was what? Yeah. She sent it just in case she won. She didn't know she won. But my story's better. I know. So. But what's Pong? Pong, P-O-N-G, I'll have you know. All right. I heard some people out here. They loved it, too. It was great. We'd never seen anything quite like it before. Holy cow. All right, next up we have the best humor blog. Nominees are Catty Wumpus, Cat vs. Human, House Cat Confidential, and last but not least, the pet blog Lady. See, the dogs are respectful. They, they join in. They like that. The judges tell me that our winner is Cat vs. Human. Congratulations. Yasmin, come on up. Not here? Okay. I do not think she is here, obviously. She's not up here. So I will accept in her behalf. Hopefully she's watching if she couldn't make it. Congratulations, Cat vs. Human. Um, every time I look at that picture, I won't tell you what I think. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So once again, somebody's probably already texted her or whatever. I'm sure she knows she won. So that's very cool. Pong. Boop. 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 We would play for hours. Oh, my God. It was so wonderful. Okay. Best micro blog. Nominees include Cattle Aussies. Deaf Dogs Rock, Denby Dog, and Stick It to Canine Cancer. I don't know if I shared with you that Zoe's 14, her only affliction is she's losing her hearing. Deaf Dogs Rock. Come on up, Christina. Bring that flat puppy with you. Congratulations, Christina. Your public awaits. <laughs> They're dying to hear what you have to say. Oh, no. Don't put too, too much pressure <laughs> on me. Well, I just want to say with our Facebook page, it's really about our community. We have the most amazing community of uh, deaf dog owners shelters, rescues. We have transporters all over the country. And now we're finally seeing shelters and rescues um, reaching out to us on a daily basis. And we're networking those dogs for them. And before that didn't ever happen. They used to be put to sleep. So we're real happy that, that it's going the right direction. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Christina. Awesome. All right. Who's having a good time? You cat ladies are awfully quiet back there. What's up? All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you were still awake. Because this one, it's not like all cats, but there are cats in it, so you'll be interested. Best new pet blog. Basil's Travels. Cat and Birdie. And don't anyone be offended, but oh my shih tzu. <laughs> I'm traveling cats. After a great deal of deliberations, the judges selected traveling cats. <laughs> Vanessa, are you here? Okay, Vanessa's not here. Vanessa is not here. And I don't have a speech, but congratulations and... We will, um, if anybody, for anybody who's not here, we'll be shipping you your awards in case you're watching. So you will get this in the mail. All right. Awesome. 
Yes. We're hurrying. All right. We now have best other pet blog. So we have Horse VA. And these are really clever names. Hutch a good life. My mini pet pig. And finally, Speedy the cheeky house bunny. Now, I... If you look under Speedy the Cheeky House Bunny there, the little picture at the top, do you realize that's a bunny with a pirate outfit on? <laughs> it's got the little eye patch and the pirate hat. And I was thinking early, yeah, I was like, Arr, mateys, give me all your carrots, or you'll meet your maker. Arr. Well, it just so happens the winner is Speedy the Cheeky House Bunny. <laughs> Rachel, my understanding is, is it... Someone coming up? Awesome. Oh, but come on up. Yeah, sure. Rachel, my understanding is, uh, lives in the UK, and she thought about coming but wasn't able to get here, so thank you for accepting the award for her. I think um, any cat, any rabbit that dressed like a pirate is definitely cheeky, so. All right, congratulations. For those of you who know Chicky, um, well, Speedy, Speedy only has one eye. Oh, hence the so, eye patch. Yeah, okay. Very much. Rachel really, really wanted to be here to accept this. And um, I don't have uh, bunnies, I have kitties, as most of you know. But she and I have a connection through another one of our community, um, Nyla Blue, who's in Canada. And so she asked, as we are sort of family, that I would accept this for her. She kept emailing me all day today how she couldn't think about it, how nervous she was, how she'd be up as early in the morning to check the email to see if she won. And I'm just delighted on her behalf. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. All righty. There you go. Okay, thanks. Next we have the best pet blog photo. Our nominees include Beagles and Bargains, Cascadian Nomads, Deaf Dogs Rock, and Positively Texas. Positively Texas is the winner. I, I understand that Alva does a lot of shelter promotion, is that right? Yes. Alva is very big in the shelter world um, and really wanted to come. So hopefully she is watching as well. So congratulations. I know you were excited and hopeful and you'll be receiving this soon. Great. That's, uh, that's really a lovely photo, Alva. <laughs> All right. Next, we've got the best pet blog post. Our nominees include Dolly the Doxy, The Intrepid Pup, Life with Dogs and Cats, and last but not least, Z and Zoe. This was a tough one for the judges, but they did select Life with Dogs and Cats. Congratulations, Susan Willett. Come on up, Susan. All right. You've got all kinds of goodies with you. <laughs> Congratulations. unprepared. <laughs> um, I just, on behalf of uh, my cats and dogs, both past and present, uh, that would be Lila, Jasper, Tucker, and uh, Rover here who's representing Elsa Claire, Calvin, 
Dawn and Athena, and as well as the uh, folks who are no longer with me across the Rainbow Bridge. Um, this is a joy. This is actually my first year at Blog Paws. I've met so many wonderful people. I've learned so many things, and I am grateful beyond words that you recognize the work that I've done and that you share the joy and the humor and the love that I have, that we all have or we wouldn't be here uh, for our pets. So thank you and thank you and thank you. Congrats. Yes, indeed. That's your step. All righty. We are up now to best pet blog video. Our nominees include Cat Catastrophes, Positively Woof, Riverfront Cats, and Tails and Tails. Our winner is Cat Catastrophes, Alana. Make your way up here. All right. Congratulations. Alana makes her way to the stage, thinking of what she's going to say to her people. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Alana Greylock. I'm actually attached to catinthefridge.com. And the Catastrophes web series is a new project that we just started, um, my husband Michael Gabriel and I, in January. The video, um, I believe that one was um, The Inheritance, which was something that we did as a special project, thank you, <laughs> for um, cat, for, oh, yes, uh, for cat, da there was a dog in it actually, if you watched all the way to the end. Um, we did it for cat dance, and we realized that people were actually really enjoying the cat videos, and so we took it a step further and we started this project, and in each of our videos, um, we are featuring uh, adoptable cats, and we're spotlighting a shelter that we think is doing good work for those cats. So from now on, all the videos that are coming out uh, will have cats that are actually adoptable. Uh, not the stars, those are mine. <laughs> I'm not giving them up. But we hope that you'll watch it. It's at uh, catcatastrophes.com. And uh, we're really thankful to have this. Uh, my husband and I are, are very appreciative, so thank you very much. Congrats. Mm -hmm. All right. Very cool. All right. We are down to our final award. Can you believe that? Seems like we just got started, doesn't it? No, it's been a pretty long evening for you, hasn't it? having to listen to my shtick. <laughs> this thing on? Okay. All right. Best use of social media by a 501c3. Now, if you'd like, I can explain the tax code. <laughs> 501c3 means they're a charity organization, a charitable organization. Fair enough? Foundation, you know, that sort of thing. As opposed to a 501c6, like AHA is. Not a charity. Best use of social media by a 501c3. Our nominees include Hope for Paws. <laughs> Little Shelter Animal Rescue and Adoption Center. The Morris Animal Foundation and Treehouse Humane Society. The judges tell me our winner is Morris Animal Foundation. Congrats. You're not Tina. <laughs> Congratulations, good work. Hey, before you start, let's look at that. Um, can we put that image back up of, of their website real quick? Okay, so the bottom left there. 
that is the most interesting man in America, or in, in the world, in the, world. the most interesting man in the world, whose real name is? Jonathan Goldsmith. From? The most interesting man in the world, or Del Secchi's. Yes, but from Vermont. From Vermont, yeah. <laughs> that that kind of tickled me for some reason, that he's from Vermont. Last Halloween, I put this very suit on, and I went to a Halloween party on short notice. I put a name tag on that said, hello, my name is the most interesting man in the world. And I went around saying, stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> and it worked. Anyway, take it away. Okay. Congratulations. Well, uh... I'd like to start off by saying I've never had this many people look at me at one time, so this is, uh, <laughs> this is pretty intimidating. And uh, I would assume that people know that my name's not Tina Martinez. That's actually my boss who cannot be in attendance tonight. And I think her excuse was uh, some family matter, but really I don't think she likes speaking in front of large crowds. But all joking aside, I know I speak for everyone back in Denver. Um, for the Morris Fa Animal Foundation that we are truly humbled and grateful to even be chosen for this event and to be in attendance here with so many different great foundations, communities, bloggers, and other companies. It's abs absolutely been a pleasure. And uh, speaking about the most interesting man in the world, um, I think it's only right to note to shamelessly self-promote something that we have going on on Twitter right now because we just got nominated for social media. We do have a viral hashtag going on right now called Ask Fallon, and uh, we're, right now we have the most interesting man in the world trying to recruit Jimmy Fallon to join our fight and our mission to end pet cancer. All right. And uh, one of the great things about social media and having a social platform is not that we can just get on every morning and post a cute picture of a dog or a cat. It's that we can connect with people like you that have the same goal, cause, and mission in mind. And really, cancer has affected many of us on the human level, but way too many of us on a pet owner level. So with that being said, we are trying to recruit Jimmy Fallon to join our cause because he has a golden retriever named Gary that we believe would be a good front runner to really raise more awareness. So every blogger, every person with a smartphone out here, if you guys want to get on Twitter and hashtag Ask Fallon, let's get him on board and let's get him at Blog, blog Post 2015. All Thank right. you. Congratulations. Good work. All right. Yeah, well, maybe next year Fallon can be your MC. Or George Clooney. But this year you got stuck with Mike Kavanaugh. My work here is finished. Thank you very much. My work here is almost finished. Dr. Kavanaugh, thank you. Almost finished, yes. My work here is almost finished. I'm going to turn it back to Chloe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you guys have made me so nervous, I'm going to go sit down and have a drink. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Mr. Kavanaugh. So we just have a couple things left before we release you to enjoy drink yourself and, and some wonderful desserts and, and mingle and have a good time. And I finally get to have a drink. Um, if you guys want to come on stage, we just have a couple of checks we want to award. As you all know, we give away checks. We've done it a little more intermittently this time, so I just have two to present tonight. And the first one is for... Right now we have a blog potty going on on Twitter, and all of the, the team that is there tweeting for us and bringing drinks uh, and you know, actively being our blog potty online, reporting on what's going on, watching hopefully, uh, we like to donate for them because they're volunteering their time tonight just to support us. I can feel that. <laughs> <laughs> so this first check is for them. Um, in, in honor of them, we are making a donation to Those Left Behind, um, which is an organization behind the table. It's an organization that um, helps pets when their people leave this place, this earth, and move on to better places, and they're left behind. Um, so this is to kind of help uh, make a difference in that manner in honor of our blog potty staff. Okay, and I'm going to represent one because the person who 
wasn't here to accept it when we first addressed it uh, Thursday night is now here. And we really want to honor her. It was our surprise attendee, um, the Rouse Foundation. So Melanie, if you're here, please come up so that you can accept and do a little photo op with your, with your check. She's rescuing uh, capybaras, rouse, rodents of unusual size. Um, it's, it's different and we love, we love being able to support all sorts of organizations that help all sorts of pets. Who here has seen the capybara, Mia? Only a blog pause, right? <laughs> and here comes Melanie. So we're very, very excited and we thank you very much for the work you're doing in honor of pets that are a little bit unique and different and don't get the attention that a lot of other ones do. So. Thanks everyone. The, the <laughs> thanks everyone. The Rose Foundation, R-O-U-S, stands for Rodents of Unusual Size, which is what capybaras are. And um, the purpose of my foundation is in conjunction with Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine to help understand how to keep capybaras healthy and happy in captivity. So um, this is going to go a long way and make the lives of many capybaras happier. Thank you. Okay, so just two last things. One, we did this last year and we wanted to do it again this year. Um, we have, can I have that? Um, the city of Henderson Fire Department, who actually they have like a huge team um, ceremony going on tonight, so nobody could be here, but we are donating oxygen masks to them so that in, in fires and, and things that happen around here, they can help pets of all size. So that goes from like birds and ferrets all the way up to large dogs. So they will be receiving um, it's like 12, a set of 12 oxygen masks. Wait, one more thing. And our last final thing, which I'm very happy about, um, and Kristen Dewey, who hopefully is watching, started this last year. Um, she couldn't be here with us tonight, but huge shout out to her, and thank you for all you did to make this happen, because it's only because of her that this is happening. But Blog Paws has donated um, body armor to a canine in the Las Vegas Police Department. And with us tonight, we have Officer Moore, and his dog Zeus, who received it. And what I will say, actually, just. <laughs> because of the connection that Kristen made with vested interest in canines and, and was able to get, get Zeus this vest, Invested Interest in Canines decided they wanted to make a difference too, and they donated 10 more vests to the Las Vegas Police Department. So, Officer Moore, would you like to just say a few words about the importance of body armor for, for your dog, Zeus? I'd just like to thank you all. Um, these dogs are very special to us. In the 17 years I've been in canine, with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, I've seen two of our dogs shot and killed in the line of duty. And it's pretty sad that that kind of thing happens to us, uh, especially these dogs who selfishly go out every day, search for bad guys, you know, no, no fear. And uh, thank you again. All right. That concludes our evening. Um, the only other things to let you know is, remember our registration site is open. So Nashville 2015, get registered now with the early bird rates. And then also um, the shuttle for tomorrow, just so everybody knows, it's running from six to 12. We did have sign-up sheets to help us know who was gonna be coming and needed shuttles. If you didn't sign up, it doesn't mean you don't have a space, but please arrive early. In other words, if, if it's a 6 a.m. shuttle, it's planning to leave at 6 a.m. So you need to be there before that so you can get your luggage on. Um, and it's about every hour. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, pick the one that works best for your flight and, and they'll be coming. And now it's time to party.